Hello and welcome back to the channel and we're back in the nursery after rubbing down all the, the walls, the ceiling uh, and everything else and that leaves us with one small section to finish filling which is behind what is a relatively new radiator. So what I'm wanting to do is take this off uh, with minimal effect possibly, uh, possible um, so I can get behind, get the holes filled, rub down uh, from, it's the holes from the old radiator, uh, paint behind here and then put it back on. So um, in our old house, which was a new build, it were a very similar setup with the plastic pipes um, and you were, you probably weren't supposed to do it, but you were able to sort of fold um, the radiator forward and I just used to fold it back onto a, uh, a paint tub so I could get behind to paint or whatever. Now another way to paint behind the radiator would be to use a radiator roller but this radiator is too close to the wall that you can't actually get it down the back. So what I want to do is take this off and I'm going to leave it full of water so it's going to be heavy um, do me a bit and then put it back on. So first word of warning, I'm not a plumber. I've done this once before in the downstairs toilet and it was pretty successful but there were a few points um, that I just want to highlight as to if you were going to do this um, you're aware um, of little complications that I come across when I did mine. So let's uh, get started and I'll take you through what I'm doing. So firstly I've got my TRV here, this is actually switched off at the moment and has been for a while while I've been in here so um, it doesn't get too hot. So what the plan of attack is, is this is switched off so the flow won't be coming through the radiator and back out. So I'm going to loosen this off and then what I've done, I've bought some of these plum thumbs so I can put them on the end and leave this full of water. And then this will stay in place and just dangle. And then the other side, have the lock shield. So this helps control the flow, I believe. And all we need to do is turn this off by turning that clockwise as far as it goes. And then the principle is exactly the same. Loosen this nut off and put, use the, uh, the thumb, the plum thumbs uh, to prevent the water from falling out. When we had all our radiators done, um, the plumber left, they did a few heat cycles if you like, and they must have uh, expanded, contracted, and every single one leaked. Um, so I had to go around and nip them up uh, and reseal them. So, so yeah, we're gonna turn off the TRV, turn off the lock shield. Now with the lock shield, and as I've said, I'm not a plumber, so um, I'm not up on central heating system, but I appreciate this probably uh, your radiators would have been balanced or something like that. So what I'm going to do is make a note of how many turns I do that and then when it turns back on or when I turn it back on when it's reinstalled I'll put the lock shield back to where it was. Um, I believe balancing allows uh, a range of temperature difference for the sort of feed and, and outgoing. I think it's 11 degrees or something but as I've said uh, not plumber, so I'm just going to put it back to how it was um, because as far as I'm aware it's working um, fine. So that's what we'll do and then what I want to do is once they're off turn the radiator upside down because we've got the blanking and we've got the bleed on the other side so turn it upside down water won't come out and that's why I've got my um, cardboard here just to protect the radiator and I've also brought the paint tubs up just uh, if I need I can rest lift it straight onto them and just make my life easier so let's get going get these undone uh, and take it from there so first job we'll just turn both sides off and uh, take it from there so I'm going to count how many turns I do on this so I can put it back that was uh, done in any 
special fashion uh, for balancing, but four turns and I'll put it back for now. And then at a later date, we can get all these uh, balanced once I've finished messing with the rest of the radiators. So the other TRV or the TRV is off. So now we can work from that side uh, and uh, start taking them off. All right, so with both sides shut, I've got my ice cream carton because you are going to lose some water between the time of taking this off and putting this on. So um, we'll do what we can to, to reduce the, the water mess. Um, but something else I've found, taking this off quickly is the best way uh, to reduce any spillage on the walls and, and, and whatnot. So do now, get going and uh, get it done. First one on, not bad. Didn't actually lose much water, so yeah, let's move on to the other side and get that one off. There we have it, both sides are off. And if you like, the radiator is isolated from the, uh, the heating system. So what I'm gonna do, whip the radiator off. And what I like to do is leave each end in a, uh, in a tub or something, just in case it starts uh, seeping water, but hopefully it won't do. Now, this is the first time using these. Seems good so far. They are plastic, so I wouldn't have too many high hopes, but it's not leaking, so that's uh, probably a positive, and same on the other side. So let's lift this radiator off. I'm gonna lift it onto a paint tub, um, and then we can see, take it from there, and decide how we're gonna, gonna go about it. So let's get that done. There we have it, radiator's off. Now, I'm not comfortable leaving it like that, um, just it's full of water. So we're gonna crack on, get the holes filled, rub down, and then I'm gonna lift the radiator back on um, just so it's the right way around and I'm more comfortable that it's sealed and we're not gonna have any leaks in between time. So I'll get going, get filling, and yeah. Right, so painted behind uh, with just plain white. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is, because the test pot's different colors, dependent on the, uh, the background. So I'm painting the whole room white. It'll also help with uh, getting behind where the skirting board was and there weren't any um, uh, paint there. So when the skirting board goes on, if it's not sort of perfectly lined up with what was there before, uh, it's got some coverage. So what I've done is filled the old holes there, painted around it for now so that can be drying. And then once the filler is dry, I'll get that rubbed down and then we'll paint the, the correct color uh, that we're doing the room uh, along all that. And then at least I can get the brackets back on, uh, the radiator back on and these plumb back in, um, hopefully before the end of the day. And then we can uh, see how we get on from there. So. Just a waiting game now. Get the filler dry and then we can look down. So we'll keep waiting.
So I've got all the jobs done that I wanted to, which is getting the holes filled from the old brackets because this is a new radiator um, and the plumber just obviously uh, put the brackets on suitable for the new one. I hate that, but it's not much I can uh, do with it now. Um, and I've also checked those because they were loose um, and all this needs to be tight. So it's something worth noting just to check that then give it a clean up and um, and then we've managed to paint just behind because it's easier to do it now um, get a good finish and then once I decorate the rest of the room we can uh, we don't have to worry about this so that's uh, that's drying all the fillers rubbed down and um, yeah good job done so what we need to do now is get the radiator back on in the reverse order of what we did there. So, um, as you can see, it's upside down at the minute. Now, just while I remember, as you can see, that's dripping. That valve, for some reason, won't shut off. So, um, something I didn't mention earlier is, I bought these last time I did this, uh, just to cap it off, just in case for, for this type of eventuality. Now, if I'm going to leave this off for a while, I'd probably PTFE that just to try and top it, stop it leaking just for the short term. Um, but because I've managed to get done what I wanted, uh, I'm just going to chuck the radiator back on. So what I need to do, this is full of water, of course. I need to flip it back around, bring it over here, and then lift it onto the to the hut. Not the easiest job, but um, we'll get it done. So uh, that's what we're going to do now and then do the reverse and then look to get the radiator uh, bled because obviously we've lost a bit of water so we can fill the system back up downstairs at the boiler and um, get it bled and back work. <laughs> So we're on, we're tight. As you can see, we've got the um, adjustable wrench on it, um, just to hold this so I can tighten that up now. Something you'll note is I haven't changed the olive. Now, I'm sure the correct way to do it is to change the olive. Um, I did have a look at the olive and it didn't look very crushed. So I'm very confident that with what I've done and the way I've tightened it and, and, and make a good seal again. Um, but what I will do is, once I've got the other side on, I'm gonna heat cycle this a few times, heat it up, cool it down, and just see and make sure. Um, what I would probably suggest is replacing the olive. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do, because um, you don't want to score and damage uh, the copper pipe that it's it's on but in this instance I've not done it but I would recommend doing it and um, just to make sure you've got a good seal now. Somewhere else that I've found weeps is just down there. Um, now I don't think this has moved since tightening it up but just be wary that it can leak from there. Uh, there's quite a bit of PTFE on there so again what I will be doing once it's been cycled is just leave these underneath for a bit, a couple of days, and uh, won't let it be cycling through and uh, just see with the expansion and contraction whether it's uh, it's leaking or not. So that's that one done. We'll get that side done and then we can open them up and get the radiator bled. Let's carry on and get the other side done. Anything that's coming out of it, you can, uh, you can 
you check to make sure that you can do something back to it. So back at this one, all we'll do is we'll open it back up four turns like it was. So this side, much simpler than the other, but what we'll do is turn it and you'll probably hear it start filling up. Well, maybe not. So we'll open it wide and uh, I'll get the boiler on and the radiator's back on. So as you can see, I've painted around, we're back on, all connected and it's been cycled uh, maybe two or three times, heating up, cooling down and we don't have any leaks. So what I'll do, I'll leave this underneath for now uh, and just keep monitoring it over the next few days um, and see how we get on now. We are actually changing the colour. Um, this isn't the colour we we wanted. We wanted something lighter, um, something like that. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to manufacture something out of that wood uh, so I can just lift it onto uh, a base and then um, I ain't got to take all the pipes off again. Um, I've, I've done what I needed to do. Uh, it's just annoying because I can't get down the back of the radiator now. So a little lesson learned. For me there, just to uh, check the paint before uh, you do the awkward bits, but um, yeah, the radiator's back on, it's working, no leaks, touch wood, and uh, we're good to go. So all I've done since last time is uh, bleed the um, the radiator, and I've, I've also gone around and checked all the others as well, just uh, as a method uh, of practice, and um, I've not done it for a while. So... We've cycled it through, bled it, and yeah, we're good to go. Uh, the the boiler had only lost 0.1 of a bar of pressure, so it's maintained its pressure pretty well, so it's not actually dropped off at all. So there you go, radiator's off, back on, and uh, it's gonna come back off again. But yeah, I think I'll leave this video here. If I do, and I hope you found it a bit informative, um, it's hard to do a bit of a how-to when you're not a pro at it, if you like. Uh, I know DIY, you're not a pro at anything really, but um, my knowledge on plumbing is very minimal. So it's done from a bit of research uh, and watching uh, plumber parts who do some really good informative videos. So uh, I'll probably pop a link down below to his channel. And um, he's really good at explaining. And that's where I get all my sort of information from. So yeah, hope you found it useful. And... Uh, Please make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did and please make sure you subscribe for more videos coming in the future and let's get some paint on this wall in the coming videos uh, on the walls and ceiling sorry so please make sure you subscribe for that and see how we transform this space into a usable nursery for our uh, incoming child so thank you for watching. please make sure you give it a thumbs up and i'll catch you in the next one cheers